Winter is coming! And no, we're not talking about another Game of Thrones spinoff. Winter, in the Northern Hemisphere, doesn't officially begin until late December. But cold temperatures are already here, and your hydraulic and fuel systems need to be prepared. That's what's coming up on Schroeder News. And hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Schroeder News. I'm your today's host, Philip Page. Now, in this episode, we catch up with two fluid care experts to find out how winter temperatures affect your hydraulic and fuel systems and how you can protect your equipment and improve its performance. Stick around. My name is Aaron Keck and I'm the Senior Product Manager for Fuels Products and Systems here at Schroeder Industries. The number one biggest issue with fuel systems when it comes to low temperature applications is typically gelling of fuel. So gelling of fuel is when the paraffin wax is found naturally within most diesel fuels, forms crystals. So much like the wax crystals you're used to seeing in you know things like jellies and jams or wax crystals that form to form like a candle. Those same wax crystals can form within fuel systems and clog filtration, which poses a real problem when you're trying to start engines, especially at these low temperatures. Some of the best things that you can do to prevent cold weather related issues with diesel fuel is to make sure that you're utilizing winter blends of fuel as early as it is available. That way you can prevent paraffins from being at such a high level in fuel that it will cause wax formation and gelling. Other things you can do is to allow for heating of the fuel systems as far as keeping the equipment in warmer climates or environments or in warmer storage. Or you can apply localized heat trace or certain heating elements to ensure that the fuel reaching the filter is not uh, crystallized or those wax and gels haven't formed. Uh, other things you can utilize are things like winter stabilizers or additive packages. Um, although you have to be careful because some of those can also mask symptoms of other issues like water in fuel. When testing fuel, especially for things like cold weather performance, um, you want to make sure that you're looking at uh, certain characteristics like cold filter plugging points. So the CFPP is a great value to look at, as well as the cloud point. So the CP value uh, that you can find on most common winter diesel tests. That's going to tell you the temperature at which those wax crystals are going to form of those paraffins in your specific fuel. Now keep in mind that depending upon when you source that fuel and which bottle sample you have and what you've taken, that would only be representative of what you sampled. So if you've gotten a new delivery or you've filled up at a different location, then you need to make sure that you're sampling the fuel that you do have that is suspect or in question. Um, you know, I usually like to start with winter fuel when comparing the difference between winter and summer fuels. Winter fuel primarily is just a straight refined petroleum product. It is not blended with anything other than the typical additives that make it diesel fuel. When it comes to summer fuels, that is when fuel companies can blend in a certain bio content. So a biodiesel content can allow for higher concentrations of renewable fuels to get a greener, more carbon offset based fuel. The challenge is that most of those greener fuels, the bio-based diesels contain higher levels of paraffin. So they're great for summer months when low temperature applications are not of concern, but in the winter months, you really need to make sure if you are in areas where you are at risk for seeing low temperatures, especially cold snaps in the spring and the fall seasons, that you are planning appropriately and you are selecting a winter grade of fuel as early as you possibly can. Yeah, some of the underlying issues that can you know, be problematic for fuel are particulate contamination and water contamination. So with particulate contamination, we have a whole host of fuel filtration products designed and dedicated to remove particulate down to typically a nominal one micron filtration down to a beta 200 or even a beta 1000 offering. And what that means is we can finally and efficiently remove those contaminants that are down to one micron or smaller. And so what we want to look at is those fine particulates can be the seed or the starting point for those wax crystals to form. So if we can remove more of the particulate, it will prevent or prolong the time at which those crystals may form. 
Um, the other aspect is water. Oftentimes we assume that the problem is fuel gelling because of that wax or paraffin content in higher bio content fuels. But what that could be masking is an issue with higher water content in that fuel. And so just like water freezes in normal environments, the water can freeze in your fuel system and can lead to symptoms like fuel gelling and wax formation. So we have a whole host of coalescing fuel water separation products that are specifically designed for removing waters from fuels. And many of them are also available with factory option heaters that are used in the sump or the water collection space of those coalescing filters to make sure you, that you can continue to drain that collected water even at low ambient temperatures below freezing. So when looking at onboard fuel filtration um, for diesel engines primarily, we have our HDP product line. Our HDP is our onboard heavy duty diesel pre-care filters. And these are designed with options like the integral flow through PTC fuel heater, which allows fuel to pass through an integral ceramic heater that heats that fuel before it even reaches the filter media. So it can help offset some of the challenges that you could deal with, low temperature starting conditions, and can prevent that gelling from forming on the surface of the filter media itself. So great for cold startup options. There's also water and fuel sensors available for those filters. So you can get an in-cab signal. If not looking directly at the filter itself, you can visually see the water collected and that can give you a good indication of whether or not you have water contamination issues. So for any sort of winter challenges, it's a matter of the specific problem you're facing. And so when you look at trying to resolve any sort of winter fuel related issues, cold start or cold weather issues, I would always encourage you to start with bottle sampling or condition monitoring to measure and evaluate where you're starting with and what your problem may be. Once you get those lab results back, once you get the data in hand, we can help you with our team of application engineers, product specialists, and customer service who can help you select the right solution for your application. We do offer a selection of bottle sampling kits that provide lab-based results within a matter of days to give you winter fuel condition, as well as summer fuel and even basic contamination, so a standard particle count and water content of your fuel. Why is it so cold? My name is Jeremiah Allshaus, and I'm the product manager for the Hydraulic and Lubrication Group. So when it comes to cold temperatures on hydraulic systems, the biggest you know, proponent of that is what we refer to as a cold start condition, where your fluid is entering a bypass condition and your fluid's not being filtered, thus at risk for further contamination. Uh, this is due to the fact that when it's cold, colder outside, the fluid is at a much higher viscosity, so thus it's going to enter bypass more, more often. So at risk is pretty much the level of contamination that's going to be entering your system. You know, if it's, your fluid is too cold and going through that bypass, your filter's not being active. So uh, all of that contamination that's upstream of your filter is going to enter your system and thus further ruining the hydraulic system. So common in-tank filtration filters that are seen in the market, uh, the bypass valve, uh, valve location is typically located in the bottom, uh, which in a cold start condition is not ideal. A lot of contamination settles on that bypass. And when you're in that cold start and the bypass is going to open up, all that settled contamination is just going to enter downstream and thus further contaminating your, your system. Uh, so we choose to have our bypass locations um, located in a more optimal location, uh, thus being on the top of a lot of the filters that we offer uh, so that you're not getting that contamination that's being settled on, on top of the bypass. Yeah, so the GPT uh, is great for cold start conditions because of that superior bypass valve location located at the top of the, the, the diverter cap right here. Um, that's where contamination is not going to, to settle and all that contamination is just going to settle at the bottom of the filter element. So upon uh, cold start conditions, uh, a lot of that contamination is just going to be mixed in while um, not going strictly downstream. So one thing with tank optimization is the fact that we can reduce the size of your uh, hydraulic reservoir. And because of that reduction in size, you don't have to use as much fluid volume. Uh, because of that, uh, the, the system allows it to heat up more quickly, uh, so that way uh, your fluid reaches an optimal temperature so that it gets out of cold start conditions much quicker. 
So when it comes to deaeration and uh, colder hydraulic fluid, uh, because of that higher viscosity, a lot of air bubbles get sort of trapped inside of the fluid. So uh, they don't have a chance to rise to the surface much faster uh, and, and can be pulled in through the suction port and the suction lines and potentially bring that air downstream to your hydraulic system. So the problem with air and hydraulic systems can lead to oxidation or the degradation of your hydraulic fluid and that can cause a lot of sludge or varnish, uh, but it also can cause potential for cavitation in hydraulic pumps. So when it comes to deaeration, we have a lot of different options in our in-tank filtration, specifically our AFT, which stands for air fusion technology. It allows the bubbles to coalesce and become much larger, so they'll rise to the surface much faster and uh, deaerate inside your hydraulic reservoir. And then in tandem with our tank optimization or our TNK um, packages here, uh, all of that in one package can help with your entire system uh, when it comes to deaeration. So some tips I would have is just choosing some optimized filtration technologies that are gonna help you get out of cold start conditions much faster. Thank you all so much for catching us on this episode of Schroeder News. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, please go on ahead and do that. And if you wanna catch up on other episodes of Schroeder News, just click right here. Thank you so much. Until next time.